The legend of Santa Claus can be traced back to a real person named Nicholas, a 4th century Greek Christian bishop who lived in the Lycia region in what is now Turkey. Nicholas was known for his generosity, kindness and miracles, especially towards the weak and children. He inherited a large fortune from his parents but donated all of it to help those who were suffering. He also performed many acts of charity, such as secretly providing dowries for three poor sisters who were at risk of being sold into slavery or prostitution by their father, or saving three innocent men from execution by a corrupt governor. He also saved sailors from storms, resurrected children killed by butchers, and distributed gifts to children and those in need. He became the patron saint of children, sailors, merchants there and many other groups. Nicholas died on December 6, 343 AD, and his feast day was celebrated at that time. He was buried in a church in Myra. Here his tomb became a pilgrimage site and a source of sacred oil said to have healing powers. His relics were later stolen by Italian merchants and taken to Bari, a city still racked with violence today. Nicholas was widely revered in the Eastern Orthodox Church, and his cult was also recited in the Western Church. He became one of the most popular saints in Europe, especially in the Netherlands, where he was known as Sinterklaas. Dutch settlers who came to America in the 17th century brought with them the celebration of celebrating Sinterklaas on December 6th. Sinterklaas was depicted as a tall, thin, bearded bishop in a red robe and mitre, riding a white horse and carrying a horse, personal and a book of names. He was accompanied by a separate assistant, the Zwarte Piet, Black Peter, a Moorish servant dressed in colorful clothes and an irregular hat, who carried a sack of gifts and a stick to punish naughty children. Sinterklaas would visit children's homes and leave treats in their shoes or socks if they were good, or coal or switches if they were bad. The name Sinterklaas was given to Santa Claus in English by English-speaking colonists, who also moved their visit dates from December 6 to December 24 to coincide with Christmas Eve. The image of Santa Claus has also changed, influenced by various sources and artists. One of the earliest depictions of Santa Claus in America was an engraving by New York Historical Society member John Pintard, which he distributed at the Society's annual meeting in 1804. This engraving showed Santa filling stockings hanging by the fireplace. Images of patron saints, Saint Nicholas and Saint George in the background. So how was the image of the Father formed on Christmas Day? The most influential source of the modern image of Santa Claus was a poem written by Clement Clark Moore, a literary and theologian living in New York. The poem A Visit from Saint Nicholas, written by Moore for his children on Christmas Eve in 1822, was published anonymously in a newspaper in 1823. It was the night before Christmas tells the story of Santa Claus, landing on the roof of a house and entering through the chimney with his sleigh pulled by eight reindeer. He is described as a jolly old elf with a little round belly, dangling like a bowl full of jelly in his rose. He wears a miniature sleigh, eight tiny reindeer, and a wad of toys that he throws on his back. He fills his stockings with candy, then flies away and says, Merry Christmas and good night to you all. The poem was an instant hit and became a classic of American literature. In addition, many aspects that are still known today, such as the names that Santa Claus gave to his reindeer, Dasher, Dancer, Brancer, Vixen, Comet, Cupid, Donner and Blitzen, mode of transportation, appearance and shape, were also popularized. Slogan. The poem also revealed that Santa Claus lives at the North Pole, where he has a workshop and a team of elves who make the toys. Another person who made a significant contribution to the image of Santa Claus was Thomas Nast, a German-born American cartoonist and illustrator who worked for Harper's Weekly magazine. Nast drew many illustrations of Santa Claus from 1863 to 1886, based on Moore's poem and his own imagination. He gave Santa Claus a more human and friendly look, with a white beard, a red suit trimmed with white fur, a black belt and boots, and a pipe. He also added details such as Santa's list of naughty and nice children, his mail from children, and his home at the North Pole. Nast's illustrations were widely circulated and admired, and they influenced many other artists and advertisers who followed. In the late 19th and early 20th centuries, Santa Claus became a symbol of Christmas and a tool for marketing and advertising. Many stores and businesses use Santa Claus to attract customers and sell their products, especially toys and candy. 
Santa Claus also appeared in books, magazines, newspapers, postcards, reading cards, movies, radio, and television. He became a familiar and beloved figure for children and adults alike, who eagerly awaited his arrival every year. One of the most famous and influential advertisements featuring Santa Claus was created by Haddon Sundblom, an artist who worked for the Coca-Cola company. Sundblom painted a series of images of Santa Claus for Coca-Cola from 1931 to 1964, based on Nast's illustrations and Moore's poem. He portrayed Santa Claus as a cheerful, plump and realistic old man, with rosy cheeks, a red nose and a twinkle in his eye. He wore a red suit with white fur, a black belt and boots, and a red cap. He was often shown holding a bottle of Coca-Cola, or enjoying a drink with children or animals. Sundblom's paintings were widely distributed and reproduced, and they helped to standardize and popularize the image of Santa Claus around the world.